speaker. I'm really excited about this. I want you to tag your coaches because this is such a great story. And I think I was just mentioning about the Olympics, how everybody has their own story. Uh, but that moment of triumph over uh, any kind of failures is a moment that you always want to root for that person. She is, uh, she has been coaching a little over two, two and a half years in June, I think, right? Or three years in June. Um, she is a 2022 elite coach. She also was a 2021 premier coach. She's a five-star diamond coach, and she has been in Success Club 33 straight months, you guys. She's from Team Unstoppable from Margate, Florida. You guys bring in, you guys, I'm the one bringing her in, Kristen Blake. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> Um, nice to have you on the call. I am going to um, have you share your story uh, at, on how you became a coach. Go ahead. Awesome. All right. So I think back to almost three years ago, you guys, I was in a really, really low place in my life. Um, I work full time. I work in health administration. I still work full time. It's an extremely demanding career. I have a husband in law enforcement. So that adds a whole different layer to my lifestyle. And I had two small children. My job was to take care of everybody but me. My job was to make sure that everybody was satisfied at work, my patients, my employees. I had to take care of my family, run the household. I was constantly doing for everybody that I let myself go. I remember sitting there and you guys, the scale, it was like a 10 pound weight gain. 15 turned into 20, 20 turned into 30. It was a huge wake up call for me because I was miserable. And during this point, you guys, of me just being in a low place, I watched my friend get started on her journey. She did the work every day. She showed up to show me what was possible. I watched her and I saw her completely transform her life, both physically, but mentally. She reached out to me the whole time and I politely said, no, I am not ready. I was too busy. I didn't have time for this. But then there was a moment where I stepped on the scale. I was in New York City for Christmas. That is like bucket list stuff, right? It should be the time of my life. Um, but instead, I didn't have the energy to walk around the streets and enjoy things. I didn't have clothes that fit me. So I was hand washing my leggings in the basement of my sister-in-law's house. I deleted every picture that I took because I hated how I looked. And I stepped on the scale in that basement. And when it said 200 pounds, I knew something had to change and I was ready. My coach, my coach, you guys, she planted that seed. She didn't give up on me. And I reached out to her, to Ashley DeShazer, and I said, I'm ready. Let's do this. But here's the thing. <laughs> I signed up as a customer, not even a coach. I didn't want the discount. I didn't care. I'm busy. Don't even ask me to coach. I was very adamant about that. <laughs> I got plugged into an accountability group, and I quickly saw what I was getting. I fell in love with the accountability. I fell in love with the group, the support. I didn't have this in my personal life. I fell in love. I fell in love with these nutrition programs. The fact that I can still live my life and get results was insane to me. The fact that all it took was 30 minutes of whenever I chose to work out and I could get results, I fell in love with everything that she offered me. And when she reached out to me and she said, how's it going? And I said, oh my God, I lost eight pounds. Check this picture out. And I sent her like a little side by side before and after photo. And she said, oh my God, you should post it on social media. I thought she was crazy, but I did it. I was curious. What's the worst that could happen? And what I found is that I was met with nothing but love and support. Not only from people I haven't talked to in years, but from this coaching community. All it took was for me to focus on my journey and for one person to believe in me. During that time, you guys, when I posted that little transformation picture, people reached out to me. They reached out to me. I became an Emerald, hit success club. It was easy, right? But it was because my coach believed in me. That's how I got started. 
Well, thank you for sharing that. I know you were talking about those eight pounds and it's like sometimes the eight pounds are the hardest pounds ever to lose. You know, we look at people who've lost like a hundred pounds and we, we think that that is a massive weight loss story, right? Mm -hmm. But the eight pounds was a decision maker for you, right? I mean, it really tipped the scale on whether or not you were going to pursue this. I just love this story because the eight pounds is really, that was the hook. It was, you want to see what I lost? I mean, I lost eight pounds and you showed that to her and that was exactly what coaching is. So, so then take us into how that turned into now you're sharing your story and now, um, why don't you just take it from there? Sure. Okay, so I still had no idea what I was doing. Still didn't want to coach, right? I didn't really think that was coaching, just posting a picture and signing people up, right? I was not interested in that. I wasn't running my challenge group. I didn't have an office, still don't, right? All the things I thought were important. I didn't have any of that, but I was curious. So I decided let's post more, right? So I occasionally posted my workout to my story on social media. That was fun. Let's see if anybody was interested in joining me, right? I started posting more on social media. I never posted on social media, but I started to occasionally. I posted recipes. I remember sharing my first non-scale victory of fitting into my college shorts for the first time. That was huge. I remember posting a picture of like, whoa, check out these baby bicep muscles, right? My point is I simply started sharing my journey from the beginning, right? I saw my coach sharing her journey, so I clearly knew it was important to share. I knew that. I was just curious if anybody would want to join me because I did not want to coach. But if you reached out to me, okay. That's what I thought. And during this time, my coach started noticing me showing up on social media. And she said, hey, you know if you sign up 12 people, you can go on the next retreat with us. I've seen these retreats, you guys, they're incredible. They are incredible. But for me, what I saw at those retreats was the community, the support that she had. I needed that. But I also knew to get there, doing bare minimum kind of posting and not doing the things wasn't going to get me there. So that's when I had to shift. What I did, I realized I had to start posting my workouts daily to my stories that's the easiest thing I can do, right? I didn't care if I had time or didn't have time. I posted my workouts to my stories and I made a commitment to post four to five times a week on social media, hard post. I utilized my commute, you guys, 45 minute commute. What else am I gonna do? I utilize my commute to reach out to anybody who watched that workout. That's the easiest thing I did in the beginning, you guys. Hey, I see you watching me. You want to join me? I planted that seed. They might not have replied or said yes, but I planted a seed. I also reached out to anyone who liked or commented on those posts. I reached out to them to see, are you interested? And when people responded with objections, right? And they're saying, oh, I'm too busy. <laughs> I'm not going to let that slide, you guys. I'm going to bust through those objections. What I learned was using the feel, felt, found method, right? I feel you. I totally understand that you're busy. I felt the same way. But what I found is that I can work out when my kids go to sleep at night instead of watching Housewives at night to have the energy to get me through the day to be a present mom. I didn't let them make excuses, you guys. I was simply consistent sharing on social media and I was consistent in following up with people. That's it. I didn't have a large social media. I think I had 200 followers, you guys. That's nothing. I literally knew a, not a single thing about social media. I didn't have a massive transformation. All the things, again, that I thought you'd probably need. I didn't have any of that, but I was consistent. I had... My big transformation, finally, I lost 35 pounds and I felt amazing. And of course I got attention, right? I got attention from that. But what I also got, which was greater than that, was the trust. I was greeted with the trust of people because I shared my journey from the beginning to now. They saw 
me transform right in front of their eyes. I showed people what was possible. I was the woman addicted to fast food, binge eating, hiding fast food wrappers in the back of my car. I'm talking eating out 15 times a week. That was me. And then when I started and I had to have vegetables, right? Veggies most, are you kidding me? I showed people how I could slowly incorporate that into my lifestyle. Get rid of the bun, get rid of the fries, add in the side salad. I showed that on social media to show people what was possible. I was the woman that chugged 10 plus Diet Cokes a day. I didn't drink water, but now you're telling me water first? Oh my God, right? So what I did is I showed people how I would cut back on my Diet Coke and now how I'm the girl that drinks a gallon of water a day. I showed people what was possible. I also showed people that after a long day of work, I was the woman that came and sat on the couch who didn't have energy to play with my kids counting down the seconds so I could go put them to bed so I could come back downstairs and sit on the couch because I had zero energy. That's who I was. But what I showed people is that I put my kids to bed and I hit play for 30 minutes for me. And those 30 minutes gave me back, gave me, me back, right? Gave my kids a present mom. So I had the energy the next day to be present with them instead of being that couch potato. I showed people what was possible. And I also learned, you guys, you can't just simply share and expect others to want to join you. You have to reach out to these people. You have to initiate. I think about why I signed up. I only signed up because my coach reached out to me over and over and over for eight months, you guys. For eight months, she reached out to me. That is why I am here. So knowing that, I know that I have to consistently invite to this opportunity. I think back to my first year as a coach, I still didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but all I knew, you guys, is that it brought me joy. It made me happy and it gave me purpose, something that I so desperately wanted in my life. Outside looking in, I had everything. But now I have everything. And when life got hard during that time, my husband was gone for a year. My career is even more demanding in the pandemic, trying to figure out how to homeschool kids or virtual school, but yet I have to be in the office. All those things had a lot on my plate. And instead of taking off the one thing that gave me joy and purpose, I wasn't going to do that. This is the thing that gave my kids their mom back. This is the thing, coaching, that gave my husband his wife back. Why would I take this off the table just because things got hard, right? That's not who I am. So instead, I reshuffled the cards I was dealt. I'm going to simply reprioritize. So what I did is I decided instead of working out at night, I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. And no, I'm not a morning person, okay? I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. I'm going to get my workout in so at night I can work my business. I'm gonna utilize my commute to and from work. Instead of listening to my favorite radio station, I turned the radio off and I reached out to people. I sent voice messages. That's what I chose to do. And during this time, you guys, I had my first working coach and she was on fire. She was taking off. And I had one of my business mentors, Erin Hopkins reached out to me and she said, Kristen, she's going diamond. You got to go two star. Now, keep in mind, I am standing in the middle of a COVID clinic that I am running, and she's telling me to get from diamond to two star. I got in my head and I was like, she's crazy. This I can't do it. That is hard. I don't have the time and all these excuses. I allowed that for one minute and I snapped out of it. And I said, you know what? This is the time. I can do hard things. And I knew that it was going to be a season. It was going to be challenging, but I knew it would be worth it. I knew I had to 10 exit. I wasn't going to miss my opportunity because things got hard. So what I did is I pulled out that follow-up list from everybody that ever said they were interested over the past several months. And I reached out to them not to say, oh, hey, we have a sale. No, I reached out to them to say, I thought of you because I made it custom to each person. That list also had people who gave me objections, right? Whether they're too busy or money or whatever it was. 
I greeted them where they were, but I didn't allow them to give me that objection. I busted through that objection. I also, you guys, learned how to connect with people on a deeper level. I work in healthcare, right? And at the beginning of the pandemic, it was really stressful and demanding and we're maxed out. So I went through my friends list. Anyone I saw that worked in healthcare, I related to them. So I reached out to them, simply stating, I totally, totally understand how you feel right now. I feel the same way, right? I'm stressed out, I'm maxed out. But what I found, and I shared with them what I have, right? From doing that, from staying up and getting only two, three hours of sleep at night, because it's a season, you guys, it's a season. This isn't forever. This was a season to move my business forward. In one week, we went from diamond to two-star qualification because I didn't allow myself to say, this is hard. I think back to my second full year of coaching, which was just last year, you guys, and I had to shift. And I realized if I want to move my business forward, I have to start recruiting coaches. Not that I really knew what I was doing or how to do that, but I knew that that was important. So I started talking about the opportunity consistently, just like I shared the opportunity to join me consistently. I shared the opportunity to join me as a coach. I consistently ran coach sneak peeks, not knowing what I was doing, right? You fell forward in this business. I consistently had what is coaching calls, right? Inviting people to that opportunity. I simply was sharing that planting seeds. So when I saw someone in my challenge group showing up, posting those workouts, posting those shakes, having these non-scale victories, or maybe a eight pound transformation, I reached out to them the same way my coach reached out to me. I poured belief into them. And you know what happened last year, you guys? We went into five star, five star qualification, but here's the icing for me. Not a single one of my coaches had a massive transformation. They were consistent, consistent in showing up, consistent in sharing their journey, and consistent in inviting. And not a single one of them joined me to coach. They started as a customer, but all it took was one person to believe in them the same way someone believed in me. That's all it takes, Sandy. You know what, Kristen Blake, I am in love with your story because it's like so linear. I mean, you be, you were a customer, you became a coach, you are treating people the same way that you were treated. I want to know as a health uh, professional, you're a health administrator, right? Um, now that you don't drink Diet Coke anymore, <laughs> once in a while, um, are you a different administrator now? Like, do you... Are you in meetings where you are just advocating different things now? Like you have a, a, a different outlook on health, right? Mm -hmm. Do yeah, you see absolutely. that in the way that you operate at work? Yeah, absolutely. I also think, um, so now I'm also running an integrative health clinic, which is more of a wellness approach, that holistic Perfect. approach. Perfect. So that's helpful. But also as a leader, I show up differently at work. Perfect. I was also thinking about the Diet Coke. I mean, I, I used to drink Diet Coke and it was like a consistent thing. You know, I would order it at restaurants. And um, so you were you had a habit of drinking soda. So was it hard to make a new habit, a healthy habit of not drinking soda? I, I won't sugarcoat it, but yes, <laughs> it was. <laughs> I wish it was easy, but it, it was hard, but it was only hard because I thought it would be hard. So I started yeah. with small bowls. You drink a small bottle of water and then that's easy. Let's add another one. Let's add another one. And then slowly 10 Diet Cokes turn into one a day. Um, but you just start with small goals and eventually. New, habit, new habits are formed. Um, I love all that. And I want to get to the end of the call with it, which is your superpower. Now, this is really like you're a newer coach. Like you've been coaching two and a half years. I think a sweet spot comes around three years. So in June, we're going to talk again. But I'm really excited that you have um, kind of found a stride. And what would you say in the last two and a half years uh, has been your superpower in this business? I love that question. My superpower, without a shadow of doubt, is I don't do excuses. I am known as a girl on our team that does not do excuses. I don't allow myself to make them, and I sure as heck am not going to allow others around me to make them. 
I think about my customers when I reach out to them to check in and say, hey, how's it going, right? And they say, oh, well, you know, not really seeing results. Okay, what's your nutrition look like? Well, you know, uh, not really following plan. Okay, what about your workouts? Well, I haven't worked out in two weeks. I'm just busy. And then here's what I do. I have to remind them of their goal. Why did you join me? I remember. And it's because you want to lose 20 pounds so you could feel confident at your sister's wedding. But those actions aren't going to get you there. Your actions have to align with your goal. I talk to them the same way I talk to my coaches. My coaches, you guys, I talk to them. If they tell me their goal is to get to Diamond so they can get at that retreat and change their life the same way it changed mine, but yet they're not on team calls. They're not in success club. And I reach out and I say, hey, what's going on? Oh, I don't really have time to invite. Okay. Well, then that diamond's not really your goal then, right? And I remind them, why? Why did you start? Why did you want to start coaching? And again, those actions, your actions have to be aligned with your goals. I'm not going to sit here and let you make excuses because what you're doing right now, and I politely remind them that, is you're making excuses because you're afraid to do hard work. That's all it boils down to. When I was younger, you guys, I was told I wasn't good enough. I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't strong enough. And I could have let those people determine where I was going in life. But I refused to give them the satisfaction. Instead, I use that as motivation. I've done this my whole life. The only person that can stop me is me. And I'm not stopping, you guys. The only way I can stop me is if I allow myself to make these excuses, to be afraid of when things get hard, when I'm faced with adversity. Because in my mind, when you're faced with adversity, you have two choices. One, throw your hands up. It's too hard. Oh, my husband's gone for an entire year. I'm working full time. My career's up to here. I don't have time, right? It's too hard. I can quit. Or I can say, I've got this. Watch me. That's the choice I choose to make every single day. I don't do excuses. Excuses get you nowhere in life. And that may come across as harsh, but I'm just, that's just me. Excuses will get you nowhere. Incredible. Incredible that your team name is Team Unstoppable. Incredible that you've been in healthcare. How many years now? 12. 12 years. So you're focused on helping others. I mean, you're in a purposeful job, a noble job that helps others. And I have teachers, nurses, so many people on this wake up call who got into a career job to help others. And who is the last person they help? <laughs> Right. right. And so you found a way to say, nope, not this time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I so appreciate this. You have a lot of fans right now on Facebook who are rooting for you, cheering for you. Can't believe that you've only been a coach two and a half years. You have done really well um, in, in the business. Keep at it. I'm very excited for your success. Thank you so much, Thank Kristen you. Blake, everybody. Kristen Blake, let me give her her name there. All right. Thanks, Kristen. Um, you heard it here. I mean, I just cannot help thinking of the parallels of the Olympic um, athletes. And one of the things that I was uh, thinking about last night is when athletes say, I had a dream. I've dreamed of this my whole life. I've dreamt of this. You don't dream to get to the Olympics. You work at it. So it's when the dream and the actions come together to uh, make that successful moment in your life when you realize you worked hard, you were unstoppable in order to fulfill that dream that you had. And that's exactly what Kristen has been doing. She's like, no more, no more, no more excuses. I'm going to do the work. So congratulations to Kristen. You guys have a great day. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you here next week. Bye-bye.